Broken Hearts in the China Study. A little background information on T. Colin Campbell. He started his undergrad at Penn State University and graduated with his B.S. in pre-veterinary medicine. After his time at Penn State, he attended Cornell University and graduated with his M.S. and Ph.D. Campbell worked at Massachusetts Institute of Technology as a research associate. He conducted his research on dioxin. He spent 10 years on the faculty of Virginia Tech's Department of Biochemistry and Nutrition. Now, Campbell is at Cornell, where he returned in 1975 at the Jacob Gold Struman Professor Emetris of Nutritional Biochemistry in the Division of Nutritional Sciences. His scientific principles has focused on the effect of nutritional status of long-term health, with a concentration on the causation of cancer. In 2005, Campbell and his son, Tom, who has an MD in family practice, co-wrote the book, The China Study. In 2011, a documentary called Forks Over Knives features Campbell's and Caldwell Esselton's work. Colin Campbell founded a nonprofit organization which is called T. Colin Campbell Center for Nutrition Studies. It is now headed by Thomas Campbell, his son. Our thesis statement that we concluded was consumption of animal protein is a significant contributor to coronary artery disease. some sort, and they were both random control trials. Uh, for the, now, for the first one, I have Morrison, and he looked at strictly a low-fat diet if it can significantly lower a blood serum level of their lipids and cholesterol. And there were 100 patients chosen for the experiment, 50 of whom were control, 50 experimental. So for the intervention, he had two separate diets between the control and experimental groups. The control was given the normal American diet, as he quoted which was high in fat and low in fiber. And the experimental group was prescribed a low-fat diet of 25 grams a day and high in fiber, such as fruits and vegetables. So the interviews that he had conducted went over a course of 12 years total, one at three years, one at eight years, and of course at 12 years, the final year. So throughout the experiment, he really couldn't find any large significant changes in the blood serum levels. They had dropped significantly actually in the third year, but throughout the course of the rest of the observation, they really had no other correlation or much fluctuation. It was pretty constant and wasn't really what he was looking for for a 12 year study. So uh, one really big thing that did happen, however, in the study after the 12th year, all of the control group patients had actually died. <laughs> so there were, and actually there are only 19 left for the experimental group as well. So even though both control and experimental groups suffered deaths, all being in the control group for the most part. Uh, there really wasn't much he could go on for his hypothesis. Uh, there really wasn't much ca uh, causation he could find or really hard evidence to prove his hypothesis to be true. But now the findings with everyone passing or after the 12-year observation did hold some sort of value in having to further this research. So as far as it being used in the China study as something to really prove, uh, to really prove the author's point, really should have been used. I feel like. But on to the next article. For my next one, I chose Ornish, uh, Dean Ornish, and his control. Uh, his experiment was looking at whether a lifestyle change, including diet and exercise, could significantly lower the healthcare costs. So for his. For his uh, study, he chose 333 patients, 194 experimental, and 139 control. So his hypothesis was what are these lifestyle changes uh, with persons. Now, for the patients, they all had some sort of angioplasty or uh, other artery surgery from the, in the past to qualify for this experiment. So he wanted to see if reoccurring, um, reoccurring complications could cause these uh, patients to pretty much have to go under these procedural interventions again. So, through a study of three years, um, he had four measurements throughout, uh, one at three months, one at year one, at the end of year two, and at the end of year three. 
pretty much used his measuring serum levels and looking at their food diaries to make sure they're following what his uh, guidelines were. So I kind of really didn't like uh, some of the points uh, in here, not necessarily the points, but he really didn't cover both the control and experimental groups. Like after he told us the number of how many control people there were, that was pretty much the end of uh, talking about them. He just focused on the experimental group, and I really didn't like that as far as study went. But after the three years, he tallied up how much um, how much the experimental group saved compared to the control group, and it was actually an annual individual amount of $29,000. That's a lot of money for just a, one person, and for the entire group, that's quite a bit of savings. Um, now, even though his uh, hypothesis came true, there are a lot of people that's still in the experimental groups that had to go under the procedural interventions. 67, actually. So the significance of just having a diet and exercise really doesn't have much proof to hold, uh, showing that this can reverse or uh, treat heart disease of, some, of any sort. And uh, some more limitations I found, uh, he really didn't have a clear definition of the intervention, so he didn't really describe his diet for the control groups or experimental groups. Also, there was no clear or clear description or comparison between the results between the two groups for angioplasty or angina. Thank you. Um, so the articles that I looked at, uh, one was a strategy to arrest and reverse coronary artery disease. It was a five-year longitudinal study of a single physician's practice. Um, it was by Caldwell Elliston. Um, it was a non-controlled trial with 22 people, but at the end, only 11 people um, were in the study. The purpose was to find out if a very low-fat diet, with or without drugs, could treat and reverse heart disease. Um, the diet was 10, less than 10% calories from fat. There was grains, legumes, veggies, and fruits as the main foods they were eating, and the um, participants in the study were given recipes on how to make low-fat diet foods. Um, the participants also were given individual prescriptions for cholesterol-lowering medication. What the overall findings were, there was a percent stenosis of a p-value with less than 0.05. The cholesterol was lowered from a mean level of 246 milligrams per deciliter to 150 milligrams per deciliter. The mean lumen diameter increased from 1.3 millimeters to 1.4 millimeters. The limitations of the study, the participants were given medications and relating to the China study that um, T. Colin Campbell said that you could lower your cholesterol and risk of getting heart disease without taking medication through a plant-based diet. This study does not prove that point. Only 11 people were studied, so the sample size is not large enough to be generalized to an entire population of people. There were no exclusion factors. Um, it was done in 1995, so the data might be outdated by now. And it was done in a single physician's practice, again, not generalizable to the overall population. This picture here shows an angiographic image um, this is the baseline artery right here, and this is the final uh, angiographic image from the end, and there was a 30% regression in that picture. Okay. The next study was the effects of lifestyle modification on serum lipids. Um, it was by Bernard. It was a non-controlled trial with 4,587 4, participants, and it took place at the Lidocan the Pritikin Longevity Center, Santa Monica, California. Um, it was to prove that lifestyle changes without medications can improve cholesterol levels. The intervention included a um, cholesterol and fat restricted diet. The participants were given exercise plans and they attended lectures about major diseases um, related to diet management and basic nutrition. The overall findings, the mean cholesterol dropped 23%. The mean LDL was lowered from 151.1 milligrams per deciliter to 115.7 milligrams per deciliter. The HDL reduced from 45.5 to 38.3 milligrams per deciliter. 
the triglycerides drop from 202.2 to 135.2 milligrams per deciliter, and the average weight decreased 84.4 kilograms to 80.6 kilograms. The limitations of this study, there were no p-values mentioned, no exclusion factors, and the intervention was only 21 days long. These two graphs right here, um, this shows the decrease in total serum cholesterol values, and this graph right here shows the percent decrease in various cholesterol levels throughout the different age groups of the participants in the study. So as we concluded from the work at Campbell, we gave an overall grade A3, which is limited, the studies were weakly designed, meaning strong evidence was not available. The studies that were done were inconclusive due to lack of generalizability and other design flaws such as being biased or not enough sample size. In conclusion, as a group, Campbell's research was poor and not strong enough to support the thesis statement, which was a disappointment to us.